Lex Greenhildex, where are you? Give us a wave. Thank you very much. Um, Lex is sorting out the whole supply chain finance uh, issue for us. Which David is Cameron introducing Lex Greensill to the, to the Small Business, Business Federation. Federation. One of quite a few introductions he would come to do on Mr Greensill's behalf. A select committee inquiry has been announced tonight into the Lex Greensill affair. The Tories on the committee want to keep it quick and low-key. They may not summon Mr Greensill or David Cameron. Public sector, private sector... And following revelations that Bill Crothers worked in a senior role in Whitehall while also working for Greensill, the Cabinet Secretary has ordered that all civil servants must declare any secondary paid jobs they've got outside Whitehall by the end of the week. Over time, the Greensill saga could reveal much about Whitehall. Its lack of checks, its gullibility, or worse. But today, the Labour leader was focusing his attack on the government reviving attack lines Labour deployed successfully in the 1990s, accusing the Tories of being the party of sleaze in politics just for themselves. Lines Labour hopes will help to pull back defectors to the Tories. Does the Prime Minister accept there's a revolving door, indeed an open door, between his Conservative government and paid lobbyists? Talk about lobbying, Mr. Speaker. He's being advised uh, by Lord Mandelson of Global <laughs> Council Limited. Uh, perhaps in the interests of full transparency, so we can know uh, where he's coming from, Lord Mandelson could be encouraged uh, to disclose his other clients, Mr. Speaker. Keir Starmer. Mr. Speaker, I haven't heard a defence that ridiculous since my last days in the Crown Court. It's, it's called the shoplifters' defence. Everyone else is nicking stuff, so why can't I? The Greensill scandal is just the tip of the iceberg. Dodgy contracts, privileged access, jobs for their mates. This is the return of Tory sleaze. We're getting on with protecting the public of this country from crime of all kinds. Uh, we're getting on with the job of running this country, of rolling out a vaccination programme. Or, 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 Prime Minister, I think we ought to at least try and address the question. Lex Greenhildex, where are you? Give us a wave. Some much. Tory MPs well, said Tory David Cameron's reputation finance. had taken a big hit. The one thing that, that David Cameron will be concerned about more than anything else is the damage to his reputation uh, that's been done by this episode. And frankly, that will be with him for a very long time. It is no doubt a tasteless, slapdash and unbecoming episode for any former Prime Minister. This saga has revived the lobbying issue, which has dogged politics for years. But it's also raised questions about whether the protections, which are meant to be at the centre of government, against bad practice, against corruption, are in working order. One inquiry was always going to struggle to put a lid on that. Even two might not do the job. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News, Westminster. Well, we're joined now by the Labour MP Dame Angela Eagle, a member of the Commons Treasury Select Committee and a former Treasury Minister. Thank you so much for coming on the programme, uh, Dame Angela. Now, you're on that Select Committee. You've now got your inquiry. You've got what you wanted. Well, I think the important thing is that we have transparency and complete openness about what has happened here. There are many, many questions which remain to be answered. And the fact that the Conservative Party ordered its MPs to vote against a transparent parliamentary inquiry, which could have taken evidence in public and published its results, shows that they want to sweep this under the carpet. It remains to be seen whether we'll be able to get to the bottom of it. But why was David Cameron allowed to lobby so ferociously in his own financial interests by current acting by current mm. cabinet ministers why uh, was green sill capital which is a, a toxic company with a very dodgy business model given access to the coronavirus large business interruption mm. loan scheme where they uh, where they lent uh, at least 400 million pounds that we know about to the gupta steel group who decided that they should have access in right. that way did they exceed their borrowing uh, requirements there and actually waste more public money than they, they'd been given access to? All of these are very, very important questions and we don't have any answers yet. OK, but we do know that David Cameron's overtures, his advances to the Treasury, to Rishi Sunak, were fruitless in the end. I just wondered if well, we you're don't... going... If, are you going to we call him... 
Are you going well, to call him as a witness? A, that's not up to me. The the Treasury Select Committee will decide in due course which witnesses to call. And would you and like to see him to, as a witness? Me personally, I, I think he needs to account for himself in public, which is why I voted for the Labour Party's uh, motion tonight to have a cross party select committee look at this particularly. Uh, but that has been defeated by the Tory majority in the House of Commons because mm. they want to sweep it under the carpet. I think there are other questions we need to ask. Why, for example, Bill uh, Crothers, who was responsible for £40 billion of public procurement, why on this earth was he allowed mm. to work part time for Greensill while he was in the right. civil service, absolutely astonishing, completely improper. Okay. Who on earth authorised that? Let me ask you something else. I mean, on a number of issues, like Brexit, for instance, one could argue that the Labour opposition has gone into a witness protection programme. You really haven't been saying an awful lot about these things, including things like the vaccine rollout. Is sleaze, Tory sleaze, now the issue on which you hope to win the hearts and minds of the British public back? I do think that... Tory governments tend to end up sleazy. This government's been in power for 11 years. It thinks that it's entitled. Ex-ministers think they're entitled. We've seen uh, major public appointments given to relatives of ministers without any competition. We've seen at least £2 billion that we know of of public procurement uh, in the coronavirus pandemic given to... Mm companies which donate money directly to the Tory party, no transparency, no competition, absolutely uh, no uh, idea how these decisions were made. It's not good enough. It's got to stop. That is an issue that any opposition mm -hmm. worth their salt would be um, concentrating on because it's potential misuse right. Very, very large amounts of public money for private gain for your mates. Okay. And it's just not acceptable. Angela Eagle, thank you very much indeed for coming on the programme.